What's up YouTube? Uh, today I'm going to show you guys how to set up my icon pack template. Uh, it's going to be a simple straightforward walkthrough. Uh, I'm going to describe a few things. I'm going to first show you how to set it up to build properly. Uh, then I'm going to uh, show you how to edit the template for your own icon packs. And once you get to this point, I actually want to show you or actually would suggest that you guys um, you know, save this as your own template once you edited it to the way that you want to use. Um, so, you know, the next thing I'm going to also show you how to do is how to customize it to your liking. So uh, whether you want it, you know, uh, an inverted uh, icon pack, you know, template, or if you want it, you know, to have a list view or a grid view or even just a simple, you know, base layout. I have it all worked out in there and I'll show you guys how to do it. Um, it's pretty simple. You have to have some type of, uh, you know, coding knowledge or at least common sense to go ahead and do this. I try to comment as many lines as I can on there. Um, you know, some of it got a little out of place once I started editing it uh, for the last update that I did. Um, I just have to go through that and kind of fix it, fix up the comments and, and put everything in its proper place again. Um, but like I said, it's going to be pretty simple. So without further ado, uh, what you guys want to go ahead and do is uh, in the description, I'm going to have several links. First link is going to be to this new community that I just created. Um, just for you guys, you know, it's just for the people that are going to be using this icon pack template, um, you know, so you guys could discuss several things. You could, you know, ask questions in there. You can make suggestions. You can, um, you know, add fixes. You guys could pretty much it's your community. It's for you guys to, you know, contribute to this project, um, you know, and, and, and grow off of this base that I already have set up for you guys. Uh, the next link I'm going to have is the XDA thread link. This is basically, um, you know, similar to the community. Uh, I'm not as active on XDA anymore. So, um, I mean, I come on here, you know, every other day or so to, to check on some of the posts, but I don't constantly post. I do check this thread whenever there's something new in there. So if you do post a question, I will try to answer it as soon as I can. Um, but this is the thread. You'll have the link. It shows you uh, several things, you know, what it's compatible with, pretty much what the what the community is going to have as well. It also is going to have the source code link, um, so you can go directly to GitHub and download the source code. It's also going to have the sample application, so you could download uh, the sample application from the Play Store and try it out and test it out. It's going to have the change log and everything in there as well. I'll try to update that as, uh, as often as I update the template. Uh, the actual uh, sample is right here. Like I said, you could download it. This is what I would recommend you doing first to see if it's something that you're going to actually want to use. Um, you know, this is it's just a template. It's a sample pack. You know, it's not it doesn't have any icons or anything, but it gives you an idea of what the actual app will look like when you open it up in your um, device from your app drawer. Here are some of the screenshots, of course. You could, you know, check those out and see how it works on tablets and phones and, you know, other tablet screen sizes like a Nexus 7 or something. Um, and go ahead and leave a review and tweet it out and, you know, plus one it too if you get around to uh, checking this sample out. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and walk through this exactly like you guys would walk through it, um, doing the exact same steps that you would have to do starting from scratch. Um, you know, I have everything blank on my Eclipse, as you can see here. There's no packages, there's nothing. And I'm going to go ahead and download everything real time for you guys. So you guys don't say I did something different or I did, you know, or it's, it's set up different. It's exactly what you guys are going to go through. So first, download the zip. <clears throat> Click on the zip button. It's going to download the icon pack template. Next, what you want to do is you can go up to here, change it to all repositories. And then we're going to go ahead and search for the libraries that we're going to be using as well uh, with this. So let's type in action bar Sherlock. Hit enter. And then the first one that's going to pop up is uh, Jake Wharton's uh, action bar Sherlock. Sorry, Jake, if I pronounced your last name wrong. Um, go ahead and click on that and then do the same thing. Download the zip file for that. That's going to download. And uh, one of his last updates, he actually removed uh, a few things from the um, from the Action Bar Sherlock library that I was using on the template. So in order to get those things back, we're going to type in nine old androids and then hit enter. All one word, you could find it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead and change this back to all repositories and then try that again. Nine old androids 
So once you find that, it's also made by Jake. Uh, go ahead and click on that and also download the zip. Now, once you have all three zips downloaded, this is exactly what you're going to need to get started. It's going to, you know, to get everything set up properly. We're going to go ahead and open up the first one. And then go ahead and just extract two. I have it to my desktop just to make life easy. So just extract it to the desktop. Then go ahead and extract the other one to the desktop as well. <clears throat> and I also have the uh, a couple emulators running here in the background, just so when I get everything up and running, it's going to be a lot quicker. I don't have to wait for them to load or anything like that. Um, and I could show you guys right away how to or how the template looks once it's built. So go ahead and extract the last one also to the desktop. Now, the internet, uh, you don't really need the browser anymore. We're going to go ahead and minimize that one. And now, as you can see, I have that one, that one, and that one. That is all the three files that you need. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is open up Eclipse. And I'm going to show you guys how to do this on Eclipse. I do not have this set up on Android Studio or, you know, IntelliJ or whatever, you know, other IDE that you're using. I set everything up initially with Eclipse. Um, I haven't made the transition yet. Maybe eventually I will. Um, but so for now, this tutorial is going to basically walk you through how to do it on Eclipse. Um, you know, if you're using some other IDE, maybe somebody else can explain how to do it. Or maybe uh, you can kind of get an idea of what you need to do based on what you're seeing here in the video. So what we're going to go ahead and do is go ahead and click on the new button at the top and then click on project. And you want to make sure that you're in the Android tab here. Some people end up being on general and then they hit project and they just completely mess up. Make sure you're under the Android um, tab here and then you want to go and hit Android project from existing code. Hit next and then hit browse. Then we're going to select that one. We're just going to import these one by one. Uh, you could do them all at once if you're filling, you know, masterful or something. I don't know. But we're going to do this one by one and make things easier for everyone else to understand. Um, I usually copy the project into the workspace. You don't have to. Go ahead and hit finish. Once you import the project, you'll see, you know, a folder called main over here. You'll see the project called main. And after the project finishes building, um, the main is actually going to pop up with a little red X. That lets you know there's an error on the project. Okay. Um, obviously, there's an error because we haven't imported the other libraries yet. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Follow the same steps as earlier. And import action bar Sherlock. Now, this one's a little bit tricky. Um, if you click on it, it's going to have all these extra, you know, action bar Sherlock things that you could add to the um, particular uh, you know, library, but you don't really need all of these. You're going to go ahead and deselect them all and just leave the first one selected. Okay. The first one is the actual library. The rest of them, this one's for like another language or something. And these are just samples and these are some other stuff that you don't really need. So we're going to go ahead and just import that one. And like I said, I also copy project into workspace. That's going to copy over. And see, main still has uh, the red X on it, and that's because we haven't set it up uh, yet to um, be dependent on that new library we just imported. And now we're going to import the last library, which is the nine old Androids. Just go ahead and hit OK. And again, you don't really have to import the sample. Um, you know, you can if you want to build and see what those particular libraries do by themselves. Uh, we're just going to import the library. Okay, I copy into my workspace, hit finish. And there we have that. Now what you're going to want to do is, um, you don't have to do this, but this is just something that I like to do just to update and have the latest of everything. Uh, you're going to right click the, you know, the first project, which is Action Bar Sherlock, and then you're going to um, rename it. And I usually rename it something like this, Library ABS. And then I put 4.2 because that is the last update that he released. Leave update references checked. Go ahead and hit OK. And it's going to change the name there. And then also 
refractor, rename. Now this is the nine old androids. So what I'll do is nine old androids. That's what NOA stands for. Um, go ahead and hit OK. Now it does that. Now you have your two libraries renamed and now it looks nice and neat. Now main, you could also refractor if you want. I'll go ahead and rename it. Uh, my icon pack new or something. And then once you do that, then you're good to go with that. Now, um, go ahead and go and click on Action Bar Sherlock Library. Go all, right click it, sorry. And then go all the way down to Android Tools. And then you're going to want to hit Add Support Library. Now all this is going to do is just, like I said, it's going to update it to the latest um, support library. This is revision 13, I believe. So go ahead and accept the license, hit install. Now the thing is, when you do something like this, um, you're going to have to do that to um, anything that you know you're you're using as well. Um, as you can see, I just did that one thing, and it changed um, from the red X, and it that that alone fixed the project. I could actually go ahead and build my project as well, and it'll work just fine. But just to be you know on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and update all the other ones. Same process. Right click it. Android tools, add supporting library, and it updated the nine old androids, and also, like I said, same thing, and it's going to do that. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is, um, this probably didn't happen for you, um, and this is only because I renamed everything exactly the way I was using it, and I also... Um, it's my computer so it might be a little bit different on yours as far as the file location and everything so we're gonna go ahead and right click on your uh, your template and then go down to properties once you hit properties I want you to click over here on the left hand panel and click on Android once you click on Android you'll see library this is probably gonna be red for you it's probably gonna be an X for you so go ahead and just remove that and then we're gonna go ahead and add the libraries that are supporting this particular build. Go ahead and hit that and then hit the nine old Android. So now you have them both there. You can hit apply. And then after you hit apply, give it a moment and then just hit okay. Now everything is there, we're good to go. This template is actually ready to be built. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and pull up my Nexus 4 emulator here. And then I'll go ahead and run as Android application. Now it's probably going to pop up asking me which one I want to install it on. Give it a second to build. First build is always going to be a little bit longer. If you're new to building APKs or anything using Eclipse or using any IDE, uh, initially <clears throat> it's going to have to build the project for you. It's going to have to build a new APA, APK uh, Excuse me, using the uh, debug key. When you're going to going to publish something to the Play Store, there's tons of other videos on how to do that using Eclipse or using whatever IDE that you're using. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click the emulator that I'm using here, um, just to load it up on the emulator. And like I said, you're going to have to build it uh, eventually for the Play Store. You're going to have to use um, you know your own custom key uh, to do that. You could do that easily in Eclipse. It's pretty simple. Now. Uh, going back to the actual icon pack, I have this initially set up to check for a particular package because I have my own uh, application on uh, the Play Store that actually you know, has all of my collective works in one place. Some other developers do the same thing. Some of them don't. Uh, it's completely up to you if you want to keep this option or not. I'll show you how to get rid of it in a minute. Um, but I have it in here because I want you know, the application on first run. It's going to check and see if... Uh, they have it installed. If they do, this little cool uh, animation pops up or, or dialogue window pops up and then you just hit OK. If they don't, it just basically is the same type of dialogue except it tells them to uh, either check later or download the app um, straight from the Play Store. And like I said, here's the template. It's already running as you see. I made no other changes. I made nothing else and it works fine. Um, this is pretty much that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like in landscape really quick. So I'll go ahead and rotate the emulator. 
and it might take a moment. Or maybe I didn't hit it. All right, so I don't know what's going on with the landscape, but I was just going to show you guys what it looks like in landscape mode as well. Um, what I'll also do is I'll show you really quick on a 10-inch tablet what the um, what the template looks like because I optimized this template to use on tablets and other screen sizes, so you could actually see um, you know several and my tablet is missing for some reason um, but it's pretty simple uh, you know you guys could see exactly how it looks running on several other devices there's several screen sizes and um, you know it's already set up for you you don't have to worry about you know adding the files for you know setting it up for for landscape or setting it up for um, the tablet view itself and I know this video is running a little bit long and this is just the initial setup I'm trying to speed this up you could probably fast forward. That's what I do when I watch videos and you know they talk too much or something. Just want to show you this really quick on here and try this again. Okay, now my template, now my ten, uh, tablet is actually showing up. So we'll go ahead and click that and it's installing on the tablet now. And now it's just going to show you a slightly different layout. It still does the check in the beginning as always. Um, and now it's showing you a different layout. And the reason it's showing you a different layout is because, like I said, it has, um, you know, it's set up for tablet view, viewing. Um, this, I like this particular setup for tablets just because it has this uh, view on the side so you could actually preview images uh, directly from the home page of, you know, opening up the app. And then you also have all the same options, you know, as before. Uh, whether or not you want to, you know, add a wallpaper, you know, you could choose the wallpaper or, you know, anything else on there. Oh, one thing to note, and this is something I'm looking, hoping somebody could help me fix. Uh, I removed, if you see here, I removed the second button, which is the button to, um, you know, to check the theme preview, uh, which is what you see here on the left already in, in its own fragment. Um, and I kind of, when I did that, I sort of messed up the order of these buttons. So um, they look normal, but when you click on it, as you see, like I clicked on wallpaper chooser and the apply theme popped up. So if I click on rate theme, um, you know, the wallpaper chooser pops up. So this is something that I'm, you know, hoping somebody could help me fix. Uh, you know, it's not a huge issue. Um, you know, I doubt many people are actually even using this, you know, on, on tablets too much. But, you know, just in case somebody is and, you know, it's already a known thing, I'm trying to fix it. Hopefully somebody can help me out with that. So now that you've seen it on tablets and that you've seen it on phones, we're going to go ahead and start making some edits to it. And what you want to do is go back to, and if you hear any noises in the background, that's actually the dog barking. Excuse me for that. So we're going to go back to the icon pack template and open up the readme file and once you open up the readme file once you open up the readme file you're gonna see um, pretty much step for step what you need to do and first sorry about that I'm back now what you guys need to do is go ahead and um, you know just follow it step for step we already did step one uh, we already did step two uh, with what I was just showing you. Next thing you're going to want to do is step three. Okay, so what does step three say? It says to open. It says open the manifest and change line 22. Now the numbers might be off just because uh, you know at the time of writing this particular um, you know tutorial or when I was making the template itself, I kind of you know I had everything set up, but I also changed some things around. So um, it might not be exactly, you know, the same once you're looking on here. Um, so line 22, go ahead and put this on here, show line numbers. So line 22 is this. 
So you're going to want to change the version code. Um, you can change it to whatever you want. This is just the current one just because I had to change it for the Play Store. Um, but you can go ahead and change it to whatever version code you want. I use something simple like this. If I'm doing a, a 1.0.1 1 or something or 1.0, I'll do something like this. Uh, that's just for my own you know, record keeping. It's easier for me to keep track of everything. Um, and you could do the same thing. Right here, you could choose where you want the icon pack to be installed to. Um, I set it to auto. Um, originally, it was set to internal only, but some people were complaining that they can't move it to their SD card and stuff like that on older devices with smaller uh, memory. So I went ahead and changed it to auto for everybody. This part right here is pretty important as well. Um, basically, it's, uh, it's setting the screen size. So you could use this template on several screen sizes. Um, everything set to true, as you could see, normal, normal screens, uh, small screens, any density, resizable, etc. Minimum SDK. Uh, I set it to 8. That means it runs with Android 2.2 and newer. Um, so if you want to only support ice cream sandwich and above or something, go ahead and change this to API uh, 14, for example. So you'll put it something like this if you want it to run on ice cream sandwich and above only. Um, if you want to support gingerbread and above only, that's API 10. Um, but just for the demo and just for the template and for maximum, um, you know, uh, I guess so everybody could use it. I set it to 2.2, which is API 8. Um, all these other things here, if you want, you could change uh, the theme of it. So this changing this line right here will change the um, action bar and actually how the, the application looks. Um, so I'll do something like this, dark action bar. And then if I hit save, it'll save it. And now instead of having a light action bar, I'll have a dark action bar at the top. Um, because I changed this and, you know, I kind of like the lighter look, I go ahead and uh, left this alone. Um, here's uh, the next interesting part. If you want, uh, you know, everything's commented out, so just go ahead and read the comments. Um, but if you want to, instead of using the grid view, um, you know, and you want to use just a, a plain old, uh, kind of older style looking um, application look, you can go ahead and change this to... Um, change this line right here, line 58. Uh, take out the grid view dot main and go ahead and replace it with this. So you're going to replace it with your icon, your dot icons dot name dot here dot app activity. So you're going to go ahead and put this part right here. Okay. And the reason you're going to do that is because, like I said, if you want to change um, the way it's set up right now, it's actually set up for grid view. So it's, it's set up for a newer look. It's set up to have like a kind of card look. Um, and that's just because I included the card uh, background image in there. Um, but if you want to have it, like I said, for an older look, you can go ahead and change it to this line. Um, and you won't have to worry about, you know, grid views and several of the, of the layout files that are in there. This part lets, you, lets the application um, be shown inside the uh, app drawer. Um, and you, you have an actual icon. If you want to get rid of that, just go ahead and remove that line right here. Um, these other activities, you don't really need to mess around with any of these other things. Um, this is sort of more, uh, I guess if you know what you're doing, you can go ahead and do these things. You can edit some of this stuff out, but it's mostly set up initially from the gate exactly how you need it. Um, this one right here, uh, this line. It tells you to comment right here. It basically says uh, this is an activity dialog that pops up when selecting uh, to apply your icon pack. Remove the Android colon theme line if you want to if you want it to open as your as its own activity instead of a pop up. So um, I kind of did a little bit of trickery and instead of having um, you know an actual dialog window um, pop up when you hit apply the theme from within the icon pack, I basically have an activity. Um, and I have the activity set as a dialog. So if you want to, you know, have an actual, um, if you want to have an actual activity, basically its own separate window, uh, you go ahead and remove this line right here, line 86. Go ahead and remove that. And when you hit apply theme, instead of opening in its own little pop-up, it's going to open up in its own separate window. I kind of like the way I did it. So that's why I have it like this. Wallpaper. Um, I set the screen orientation, no sensor, so 
um, it's it's basically always going to be in portrait mode. It's not going to be able to rotate. So you know, if you have even if you have rotation on or anything like that, the wallpaper is always going to be viewed the same way, um, and that is going to be applied towards tablets and uh, phones alike. So it doesn't matter what screen size, what density you're on, it's never going to rotate. Um, if you want, you could change this, or you could actually just remove this line, and it will automatically rotate if you want it to. I don't recommend it just because of the way I have everything set up in the actual layout files. Um, if you change this line, then you're going to have to change some of those things, and it's not something I'm going to do um, just because I prefer it this way. And this next line, some people prefer the uh, actual wallpaper or the icon pack to show up when the user selects uh, to view the different wallpapers. I don't. Um, when you have a bunch of different icon packs installed on your phone, I think it kind of gets annoying when you have when you're trying to change your wallpaper. And instead of you know having uh, you know just the basic wallpapers like live wallpaper and the included wallpapers, um, and you have all your icon pack temp or, or, or icon pack, excuse me, you have all those different icon packs installed, and every single one of them shows up. That gets a little bit annoying, if you ask me. So if you want that to happen. Um, just go ahead and remove this part and also delete this part and that alone will allow the wall or allow the icon pack to show up when the user selects for the wallpaper like I said for my template I don't want it showing up like that so I left that alone everything else here these are for several things as you could read the comments okay now going back all the way up to the top what we're going to do is we're going to edit this particular line here. And this is your package name, so just name it to whatever you know you want. I'll just put com dot the one dynasty dot icons. And once I do that, go ahead and copy this line. And sometimes what happens is even though you change it, uh, you refractor it um, from the package itself, from the package name itself, um, sometimes it doesn't change all of the names. And the one that I found that it doesn't change all the time is this one right here. Um, it's line 159 if you haven't changed anything else. Um, just go ahead and paste that in there. So it's the one that ends with dot docs provider. Um, just go ahead and change that manually yourself. When you hit save, it's going to ask you, uh, it's going to say the stuff changed, you want to update launch configuration, just hit yes. And you could actually close out on this file now. And then if you go back to the readme, if you go back to the readme, um, basically I just walked you through everything on there. And step four, we're going to jump to, it says open the source directory on your, on your directory and find the this package. Once you find that package, we're going to refactor it, um, make it your own package name. Um, so that is under here. And as you see, all of these things popped up red, and that's because you changed the package name, and now everything's reading wrong. Um, so to fix all that, we're going to go ahead and right-click this, and then refractor. And then we're going to go ahead and put in the exact same name. So just paste in the same name um, that you put for your package name there. Hit OK. What it's going to do is search the entire package or search the entire uh, code for that particular line. So anything that reads your.icons.name.here, it's going to change all of that to the new line that you just did. Um, so as you see, this changed over here. Uh, once it finishes building, boom, everything is changed fine and you have no more errors um, on your project. Now. As you can see, template says, or the readme says, now the fun begins. And depending on how you set it up, um, basically it's, it's going to show you, it's basically that line earlier that I was telling you um, whether or not you want it to have the grid view or the list view or the actual older style um, application view um, with just the buttons on the page and nothing fancy looking or anything like that. Um, so depending on that is you know, the next step that you would take here. Uh, just reading really quick because I want to make sure I don't miss any steps myself while I'm explaining it to you. All 
Okay, so step number six. Step number six. Um, it's pretty simple. Navigate to the folder to the strings file, um, and you're going to want to change, read the comments, and then change the necessary files in there. So in here, going to navigate to values and then strings. So we're going to open that one up and then click on here. And you're basically just going to change, read the read the comments uh, like I just said, and then just change out you know the the different names, uh, the different strings. So you change out this one, uh, you change out this one. Um, developer link, you're going to want to put in your own uh, link to the Play Store. Uh, developer name, you're going to want to change that. You're going to want to change also the uh, the theme description um, for the app. Um, and it tells you right there exactly what everything is. And then this one, this one doesn't show up everywhere, the theme description. Um, this one only shows up, uh, as far as I know, in Apex Launcher. When you go to apply the theme, it's one that pops up on there. Um, and it shows you, um, you know, it tells you what to do basically as far as you can open it up uh, in, the, in the app drawer and, you know, change everything out. Um, but this one, this description here only shows up in Apex as far as I know. Um, you, if you want, you could have it to read the same as this description. It's completely up to you. Um, go ahead and change the dev name here. Uh, and then you could also change the dev description. Anything with the developer or dev uh, tag, just go ahead and change all of those things. Change, change the name here. Um, you could put what stuff you make. If you only make icon packs, I have you know made several things. Theme chooser, icon packs, uh, UCCW skins. So I put mine there. Um, dev bio. This is a quick you know bio of yourself. You know you could just basically say something about yourself. You know this is just a, a an about page for you. Um, that's what that part is. Uh, miscellaneous strings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All these other things uh, you could pretty much leave alone. Some of these things you have to leave alone. If you change some of these things, it actually will affect the way the icon pack functions and works. For example, the I, uh, the Apex previews. Uh, these are the names of the previews that you see when you open it up to apply the theme in Apex. Um, the Apex theme settings. If you change any of these, if you change, for example, this to false. Um, this is a good example here that you can change if you want to. For example, if my uh, icon pack doesn't include a skin, an icon pack skin, um, you know, and the skin is basically changing, uh, you know, what the app drawer looks like, what the folder backgrounds are for Apex and Nova and stuff like that. If you want to go ahead and change those things, or you don't want to change those things, change this word here from true to false. And changing it to false, um, you know, when the user goes ahead and uh, tries to, you know, apply your theme, it's not going to have the checkbox for the word skin, which means, you know, they can't apply the skin. I'm going to leave it to true because I want it to do everything. Um, and also this right here, uh, if you change this to false, when the user goes to edit individual icons on their desktop or their homepage, they're not going to be able to. So if you want icon picker, leave this to true. And this is for Apex. Other launchers, it's in their um, it's in their own settings. It's in their own intent, so you don't have to worry about it. But for Apex, you know, it's highly customizable as far as themes. They support themes the best that I've seen. So those um, options are actually completely left up to the developer, to the to the theme developer, and not just the launcher itself. Um, you can go ahead and leave these these words right here. Uh, these are basically for the dialogue that pops up once the user clicks on apply theme. Uh, these are the different names. And once you change everything, once you edit it the way that you want, go ahead and uh, save it. I'm not going to save it because I didn't want to change anything. Um, go ahead and save it, and you're pretty much done with that one. Next, you're going to want to navigate to the colors folder. Um, this is a pretty important file here just because um, this is where you're going to be doing most of your changing for your skin, like I mentioned earlier. Um, it's going to change a lot of colors. It's also going to change a lot of font colors in, their, in, in the actual app itself. It's not going to change anything about the actual theme. Um, this is Everything I'm talking about here is going to change the way the app looks itself. So changing any of these things will change um, you know, all those different uh, colors. If you want to, for example, invert, um, you know, which is pretty popular among some people, 
Uh, some people prefer to have a dark app instead of a light app. Um, I prefer the light app myself. Uh, I guess it just happens with age or something. I don't know. But uh, if you want the dark app, if you want the inverted app, um, you're basically going to have to change a few things. Um, first of all, you're going to have to change your app BG. And uh, this is the stock color that Google has. It's a very light gray. Um, you're also going to want to change this, which is basically the background that, you know, that, that is there when the wallpaper, uh, when the user is on the wallpaper section of your app. Um, and you're also going to want to change, you're going to want to change this to, if you change this to a dark color, you're going to want to change this to a light color. Right now, this is a dark color, so this is a light color. So it's basically just opposites because one is the background and one is the text itself. Um, so you're going to want to change those things. Um, and this is just something you could play around with and see whatever works best for you and whatever fits you best. This particular section for the tablet layout, this is the, it's actually not tablet layout anymore. It's just, uh, I guess, the banner layout. So let me just change that really quick. So it's, it's actually the banner layout. Um, this is the font color that you see um, on the actual banner right here. So where it says your icons names here and then uh, the developer, the One Dynasty. When you see that right here, that is actually this these two colors right here. The first one is obviously the title. The other one is the name, um, the developer name, the description. And I just left it as a description just because some people might want to put a short description of their app in there. Uh, miscellaneous colors, you could change up some of these colors if you want. Um, not really needed. And then uh, this one right here, uh, it's a holo blue, so or hollow blue, I should say. Um, you could change those as well. I don't recommend it, but if you do, if you just want to leave it inverted the way it is on the sample app, that's why I recommend downloading the sample app and, and checking it out. If you don't, if you want to leave it exactly like that, then don't even worry about this colors um, section here. You can go ahead and just skip that step number seven. Uh, now we're almost done. Go ahead and navigate to the res drawable no DPI folder. Okay, and this folder is basically where you're going to put. Um, you know, several images that are not really um, used in the icon pack itself, but these are used in the, in the actual app itself. So, for example, if you, you know, click on this, it's basically going to show you all the different icons that show up. Uh, you can go ahead and change these more to your liking. These are just ones that I made really quick, um, you know, just to show you guys, uh, you know, just for the template. The banner here, this is the banner up here at the top. So you have to change this tablet banner image uh, and it's a .9.png image um, and that's so it could stretch across uh, all the way over here and it doesn't get all you know stretched and mushed you know in the wrong areas. Um, theme header that's pretty much um, that is the preview image that the users see when they hit apply theme for you know maybe Apex or another launcher that might you know, have like a preview image. Um, and then, and then all these other previews, you're going to want to change these to your own previews. Okay. Um, and it's very important. Don't leave the, you know, the generic ones in there. You could delete them if you want. You don't have to have previews, but they're all there. Um, the wallpaper, go ahead and look at the wallpaper and wallpaper small. The wallpaper is, Basically, what uh, this is the wallpaper right here, um, and then the wallpaper small is going to be this little icon down here at the bottom. So this does not just automatically generate; these are actually two separate files. Um, so you want them to match up. So just make sure you name them correctly, and you can name it wall underscore one, um, wall underscore two, wall underscore three if you want to add in more. It's pretty simple to do. Um, but just so you know that those things are um, some of the things that you have to change. And while we're on that topic, I just want to briefly mention, if you want to change that, you're also going to want to open up the values folder. And then if you want to add in more wallpapers, open up the values folder and then wallpapers.xml. I already added uh, for, for up to four, but if you want to add more than four wallpapers, 
um, just go ahead and add another line. So add another line and then add another name. So wallpaper five. Um, you could also change the default wallpaper that sets up once the user clicks apply theme. This is the wallpaper that is automatically applied. It doesn't have to be by the name. You know, it doesn't have to be by the order. Uh, if I wanted, uh, you know, the fourth wallpaper to be the default, I would just change it right there. So go ahead and save that. Now, step number nine uh, says to navigate to the MIP map dash HDPI folder and mipmap dash xhdpi folder. Um, and this is basically, uh, you know, where you're gonna put in miscellaneous images. I just put them in a mipmap folder uh, because I don't want them mixing up with uh, my icons just in case I use the hdpi folder for icons or the xhdpi folder for icons or something like that. So I put them in these other folders and all I put in here was just the about image. So it's just my pretty face on there. Um, and you can go ahead and change that out, put your own icon or put your own picture, whatever you want to put, um, that's completely up to you. Um, just make sure if you don't put anything, my face is going to show up. And if you remove it, then you know, you're going to have to make some other edits to several other files. I won't get into that because that's not a part of the template. So after you do that, step number 10, um, you're going to add in your own icons. Uh, and usually what I do is I add my icons at a 144 by 144 pixel um, and I add those to the XXHDPI folder, okay? So that is this folder right here. <clears throat> There's already several um, uh, actual icons that you're going to need to include. Um, and these are basically just like the app drawer and the app drawer button pressed and stuff like that. Um, and then the actual icon for the application itself. Um, so icon up on, icon back, and icon mask. Um, these are just some files that you're going to have to play around with if you want to include that. You don't have to include these. You could actually remove these files if you want. I'll go ahead and delete them to see. And see, I still have no errors. And let me close out one of those emulators. So, uh, like I said, you could delete those if you want, but these four files need to be in there. Um, just make sure that you edit them for yourselves. I just put some generic images in there. Uh, just make sure you edit it for yourself so you can use um, for your own icon pack. And uh, if you want to use uh, several other sizes for maybe smaller screens, you can go ahead and make uh, the same icons and you could put them in the HDPI folder, the drawable HDPI folder. Um, but just make sure that you put those at 96 by 96 pixels. Um, and you can follow the Android guidelines, you know, as far as sizes and everything. Uh, but just a quick, um, you know, recap, HDPI uses 96 by 96. Uh, LDPI uses 36 by 36. MDPI uses 48 by 48. Um, XHDPI uses, uh, oh, I'm sorry, X, XHDPI uses 96 by 96. HDPI actually uses 72 by 72 pixels. Um, so I just wanted to correct that, correct myself really quick. And again, like I said, XXHDPI uses 144 by 144. Um, it's safe to include 144 by 144, and it would automatically rescale everything down for you. You don't have to worry about it. Um, the only issue with using XXHDPI images is that on really small screens like a LDPI, which is like less than 2% of phones or devices out there, and also MDPI devices, MDPI, um, you might not have as much of an issue with it, but it still might be there where some of the icons might actually look slightly distorted. Um, but I set this icon pack template up to support, you know, more newer devices anyways, um, you know, the majority of newer devices, which, you know, most of them either have HDPI or higher. So that's why I have that in there. Um, you could also just put it in X HDPI and it will scale up or down, you know, just fine either way. Um, most developers like to claim HD. So they include at least 144 deep, um, pixels. Um, so that's why I just put it in. Um, so technically this is an HD icon pack template. If you want to look at it like that. And now going back to the README, almost done here. Um, and this just talks about inverting it, like I mentioned earlier. 
um, what files you need to change. You could just read this again just to recap everything. Um, and you're pretty much done. That's that's the whole template. That's the, the whole entire thing. Um, that's set up exactly, um, you know, for your own use and for however you want to use it. Now, really quick, what I want to do is just show you guys several other um, setups. And bear with me here. Uh, I think my computer is going slightly slower because I have been running this emulator for a while. And once I run the emulators for some time, it starts to take up a lot of um, a lot of memory, and it starts to make everything go slow for me. Even though I have eight gigs of RAM on here. Um, so now that that is set up, what I want to do, you guys are pretty much done. You guys could stop watching here. Um, if you want to customize it more to your own liking, you can keep on watching. I'll show you guys really quick. Instead of making a separate video, um, I'll just go ahead and do this all in one video, and I'll, I'll, I'll you know, put a little guide on the on the description on what times and everything comes on, just so you guys can know what is what and as far as um, you know what section to look for. So on here. What we're going to do is, if we want to, um, for example, change the actual grid layout. So instead of having a grid layout, um, you know, to where it looks like, I actually have to show you again. So instead of having a, a, a grid layout where it's, you know, three icons across, um, if you want to change that back to something like a list view, if you want to change it to where it has, uh, you know, three or one across, you know, just one one item per row. Um, this is how you would do that. And like I said, let me just start this one up real quick so I can show you what it would look like because I have to run it in the emulator since it's uh, grabbing from a grid view. But basically you would go to this, uh, I think it's grid view layout. And again, just bear with me. It looks like we've uh, crashed Eclipse. Probably because I'm trying to start up the emulator and do all of these other things at the same time, as well as recording this. And um, just really quick, you know, so you guys know, you could always email me, uh, the one dynasty android at gmail.com. Um, I try to get back to people as soon as I can. Um, usually I get my email on my phone, um, and sometimes I respond on there, but if it's something more, you know, intricate, then I can't really respond on there. I have to, you know, refer back to my computer. So I might not respond as fast, um, but usually if you would ask in either you know, the icon pack template uh, community or the template um, thread that's on XDA, I usually will respond because I'm usually checking those things out once I'm on the computer itself. So let me see if this is going. All right. So now that this is up, uh, let me see. Now, you're going to want to have this file open. You're also going to want to have... I believe it's main, grid view underscore main. Um, well, it's not that one particularly. Um, really, just just quick uh, side note. If Because I have this temporarily set up a uh, specific way, if you remove any grid items and your uh, grid is extending too far, like you have too much space at the bottom, uh, you're going to want to change this layout height in the frame layout um, you're gonna to want to change this particular uh, setting right here to something smaller. Um, you just have to play around with it, change it to 650 or something. You just have to play around with this particular number here um, in case you uh, have that extra space. If you leave everything the same way, then you won't have any issues. Uh, you can just leave it alone. And it's not something you're always gonna to have to change. Uh, it should work fine for other screen sizes. Um, it's just because of 
the way I have it set up right now. Um, that's the way it is. So really quick, looking back in here. So as you guys saw, there's uh, three, one, two, and three different items here. Uh, if you want to go ahead and change that, open up grid view behind, grid view underscore behind in the layout folder. And once you do that, you're going to look for this line here and you could change it to whatever number you want. Um, you could actually change it to auto and it's going to automatically fit to whatever screen size. I don't recommend it because I have the other one already set up. And keep in mind that this is uh, just a normal layout folder. So this is not going to affect tablet views. It's not going to affect any landscape or anything like that. Those are all in these other folders already set up. You don't have to worry about those. This is just for phone views if you want to change it. So uh, some people might want to change it to one. And if you change that to one, then your view is actually going to change. Um, if you do change it to one, just have to change as well. Go back to the grid view underscore layout file and you'll see this entire section at the top commented out and it's commented out for a reason. Um, if you're not going to use this other view, then you could, you know, just go ahead and delete it. But this is for people that are actually going to use this uh, section, um, you know, in their application. Um, what you want to do is you could, you know, experiment with it at first. So I would just recommend commenting it out first. And then after you comment it, then that whole section there. Oh, sorry. Okay, ignore commenting it out. Just go ahead and just go ahead and delete this section. Everything from under here down, you can go ahead and delete. Okay, because this is uh, like I said, only for your phone layout. So you can go ahead and delete that. And then what you're going to want to do is remove the comment down here and remove that there. So all that did was it just, it's already set up um, to work properly for the different layout. See, as you can see, this changed and now everything fits better. Um, so if I go ahead and I run this application, so as you see, it's showing the three originally. Um, if I go ahead and run this application, it's going to change from the three, it's gonna show the one, um, the list view, just a single list view. Give it a second to build and then ask me which one it wants to go on. And I know this video ran a little bit longer uh, than I expected. Actually, a lot longer than I expected. If you made it this far, I want to congratulate you, um, you know, for sticking with me and watching this entire thing. And I'm not sure what happened, why it did not ask me to load. Okay, that's weird. Let me try it again. Run as Android application project. Seems like it's only grabbing from my phone and not this emulator that I started. Not sure why. So we'll go ahead and close that emulator out and then start it up again. Oops, sorry, started up the wrong one. Go ahead and start and launch. And just bear with me here. All right. Now, hopefully, it's going to read. And I've never had this issue before. I don't know why it's doing it now. OK, so there's the new emulator. And now it's online. So if I open it in there, instead of the three columns, you're going to see just uh, the single column. And it's going to be road instead. See, pretty simple transition to do. Uh, but as you see at the bottom here, uh, it actually cuts off the last one. And this goes back to uh, this file that I was, or this, this other um, 
grid view underscore behind. Oh, sorry, grid view, grid view underscore main. This goes back to this. If you change that other one uh, from the three columns to the single column with the rows, um, you're going to want to play around with this number. I believe um, I have another project set up, and I believe it's set like around um, 10, sorry, 10, it's somewhere around that. Um, you're just going to have to play around with it and, and figure out what's going to work best for you and your needs just because um, you might have less items than me. And if you have less items, then it's going to affect, um, you know, how it looks itself. So as you can see here, now you can see the rest. And see, I gave it too much space. There's extra space on the bottom. And again, uh, there's, there's a simple Java code I could um, implement in the code it's in the um, in the files itself for the grid but uh, I'm not that great with Java I know it looks like it because I provided this template to you guys um, but I'm just kind of uh, learning myself and I don't know how to properly implement it to where it automatically wraps the content uh, once that's you know properly Im implemented then I can go ahead and change this to wrap content instead of you know the, the actual set size so but that's pretty much that um, inverting it it's, you know, it's the same process, uh, you know, like I mentioned earlier, just change a few colors around and it's going to show you the same thing. You don't have to worry about um, changing other parts of the layout or anything. Um, and even if you go like landscape or something, it's still going to show because I have a separate layout fo file for landscape. It's still going to show you the grid view in landscape. Uh, this only affects um, this particular view here. And I think it's fitting for a phone, you know, to have this view if you want as an option. So that's why I have it there. Um, the other views, I think every other screen size in landscape and in tablets, etc. cetera, um, I think those deserve, um, you know, more of a, more of a grid view. So that's why I have it set like that. Um, so like I said, once you guys have this set up, you know, to your liking, I would suggest, you know, saving that file separate for your own. Um, and then just using that as your own template. You know, my template here is just to provide a base. Um, once you edit the things out that you want to edit out, then you can go ahead and, um, you know, set it up for yourself. Let me just go ahead and close this, close this, and close this. All right, the next thing I want to talk about really quickly, and I'll just fly through this because it shouldn't take me that long. Um, if you want to go ahead and remove some items from the list, uh, we're going to go ahead and open up, I uh, believe it is in the adapter. If you go into the source adapters package and then the main adapter, if you go in here, <clears throat> excuse me, if you go in here, um, this is one of the files that you're going to have to edit if you remove items. Um, so just keep that one open. Also in grid view, in the package grid view under main, um, you're going to want to go ahead and just read the comments. Most people have figured it out on their own. I shouldn't have to explain it to you guys. It's pretty self-explanatory once you read the comments. Um, if you have issues, just go ahead and, you know, leave a comment somewhere in here in the, uh, in the community or even on the XDA link or send me an email if you want a slower response. Um, but like I said, just read the comments. You should be able to get it. Uh, just removing this right here, you could actually remove, if you don't want it to check in the beginning, you could actually remove pretty much from here all the way up to here. You could remove that entire section um, and then just fix your imports. And that's all you would need if you want to remove that initial check. I know I had a few questions of people asking me, you know, how do you remove the, the automatic, you know, application check in the beginning? If you want to remove it, that's how you do it. Just make sure that your main file looks like this and you should be good to go. You won't have any issues. It won't check it anymore um, if you do that. And go back to, I know I'm kind of hopping around here. This wasn't exactly planned, um, but just go here to fragments package and then click on main fragment. And once you click on main fragment, um, you're going to go ahead and make some edits in here. Uh, just read the comments. It tells you what it is, what everything is. Um, this is the section where I have the different look uh, for tablets versus uh, regular phones. Um, 
if somebody could help me readjust the order of those buttons, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, but go down here to around line 110 or so. Um, this is where you're going to go ahead and edit the actual items that are there. Uh, this is the first item. Just go ahead and remove all the way from case, from the beginning of case to, uh, to the semicolon after break. Go ahead and just remove that section. And now you're not going to have that first item on the list. Um, and then just make sure you change all the cases to the proper order. Um, just so you don't run into any issues later on. But this is how you would remove items from your uh, grid view or list view, however you have it set up. Keep in mind, uh, whatever case you remove, so if you remove case 5, uh, on the main adapter.java file, you're going to also have to remove case 5 here. And then also scroll down a little bit more and then remove case 5 here. Because uh, these adapters are basically um, including the other um, text view color and it's also uh, including the icon that you see. So if you remove something from the main uh, main fragment.java file, if you remove a case from here, you're going to have to go to the main adapter and remove that same case number that you removed. And that's pretty self-explanatory once you do that. Uh, everything else is pretty much good to go. I don't think I've gotten any other issues besides those things that I described earlier in the video and besides what I just uh, commented on. I think we're pretty much set. If you guys have any other questions, concerns, I know the video ran super long, um, but it's a great video. I'm sure you guys would like it. I'm sure you guys would appreciate not just the video, but all the work that uh, I've done to prepare this template for you guys and include um, for you guys to go ahead and make your life easier. Um, if you guys would like to contribute to it, like I said, just comment and, and leave, you know, somewhere in here. Some one of these sites, I'll be able to, um, you know, get some feedback from you guys. And, and, and you guys, if you want to, you know, tell me about a fix or something or tell me about, um, you know, anything else that I should add to the template. Just go ahead and post it in here and I will go ahead and, uh, and you know, if it's something that the template needs, then I'll do it. If it's uh, a fix that, you know, you know, we've had several people um you know, offer fixes and, and tell me several things. Um, you know, Nathaniel Webb comes to mind. He was one of the guys who helped me um, add in action launcher support um, and actually add in the button for that. Um, you know, we're all theme developers. We're all, you know, mostly themers. Um, you know, not a lot of us are developers. I sort of understand this stuff a little bit better now because I've been working on my app. So I was able to, um, you know, work this template a little bit more intricate than some other templates are that are out there. Um, there's other support coming. Um, you know, this supports lots of launchers. I don't, I can't say all of them, but I know for a fact it supports at least the five main launchers that people use. Um, it doesn't support Go Launcher. It's a simple add-in. Uh, I'm not going to add it into the template because uh, Go Dev team they're not really supportive of themers, and at the same time, they're they're um, the way that their icon packs. Um, applies themes is actually reversed from every other launcher out there so for your um your icon up on and your icon back and stuff like that those actually have to be reversed um the images have to be reversed in order for you to properly theme those um that particular launcher so i'm not including support for that launcher if you guys want to there's you know somewhere somebody posted in there um in the xda link about fixing that about adding it sorry um, and, and there's other launchers that I'm going to add eventually. Um, uh, I just need the, the timing and I also just need some of the coding. If, uh, some people are willing to submit some of that to me, I'll go ahead and add it to the template. Like I said, so that's pretty much the video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe. I don't have many videos related to Android, but whatever, subscribe anyways. Um, and, uh, be sure to like this video, share it with everyone that you know. I know it ran really long. Um, but it's a really in-depth video. It's a really um, intricate tutorial um, on how to go ahead and do these things. And I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys don't have any, you know, repetitive questions after this um, because that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to direct you guys directly to this video um, unless it's a new question that I haven't already discussed in the video. Um, I'm just going to direct you guys straight to the video. So please, please, please 
do not ask the developers any questions that are not, you know, that's not answered in the video or that's answered in the video. Sorry. Um, and just enjoy the video. Just share it with everybody you uh, you know, and be sure to circle me, the One Dynasty. Circle my profile on uh, Google Plus. It's a great page. I just you know always sharing stuff for um, for Android stuff and other similar things. Um, sharing lots of videos, jokes, and all sorts of Android and technology related stuff. So go ahead and uh, circle me on there. Um, and I don't tweet very much, but you could you know follow me on Twitter. And uh, I also have a Facebook page somewhere, too. Uh, I don't do much Android stuff on there or development stuff on Facebook. So, you know, it's kind of pointless just to add me on there. But if you want, you could do that. Um, subscribe to my YouTube page. And thanks, you guys, for watching.